it's Fran again at my bench. I've got some servicing to do on some vintage Frantone. This is a set of effects that I designed and built for Boo Reiners uh, back in the early aughts. I'm going to upgrade the switches because these, these are the older type of switches and because I have to do a switch upgrade I thought I'd actually talk about the evolution of foot switches in pedals because back in the mid 90s when I started out you know we're talking like 94 95 uh, nobody made a three pole double throw snap type foot switch that you could just order from a manufacturer and put into an effects pedal that was really something they could have done like totally custom so you had to have deep pockets <laughs> does something like that fabricated you have to pay for the, all the dies molds tooling everything uh, to have something like that done, done custom but the original switch made in Taiwan. Never bought the Chinese switches, always I got Taiwanese. But these are the switches that I originally put in my pedals and with the solder lugs. Because when I started out doing the Hepcat and then uh, the first runs of Peach Fuzzes, I was doing the circuit board as a side assembly and I did a, a lot of wiring <laughs> from the switch and uh, so I, I did the solder lugs for the first few years. Um, and uh, this was the original switch that I got. It's a, again a Taiwanese switch. It's kind of soft, uh, but uh, these were semi-reliable. I basically would uh, test them by feel. I don't really remember having to replace too many of these, but when I moved the shop to uh, have my Brooklyn shop in New York, I, I changed the way that I do this. Went with a totally different kind of switch. Same manufacturer, Taiwanese manufacturer, but um, but this is the dual pole double throw PCB mount switch, which I needed because I was doing a new kind of uh, internal arrangement with my pedals in the early aughts, where I was building circuit boards myself in house, and I consolidated everything in one board. So the switch was actually mounted on the board, and the switch would hold the board in place. The interesting thing about this. Uh, double pull, double throw, switch only thing is that to do uh, audio switching and have indicator lights you had to make some choices. So in the early days, you know, we're talking 70s, 80s, anything with true bypass didn't have an indicator light. It was just you had uh, one side of the switch for the input, one side of the switch for the output, and you would, you know, have the um, one pole go to the other for the effect loop if you wanted to have true bypass. If you wanted to have an indicator light uh, you basically had to do active switching, which meant that you had to have one side of the switch go to a FET or a transistor to switch the effect on and off and have the, the bypass mode go through a, a little amplifier stage and basically the effect was always on. And all the Japanese pedals uh, had that kind of arrangement through the 70s, 80s. But in the boutique age, you had to compromise because if you wanted true bypass with a switch like this, you couldn't have an indicator light because you're going to use both of these poles for audio switching with the uh, effect going from one side to the other and then the input, the output, and then just the other end tied together for you know the bypass. It was a big problem, and I got around that uh, issue <laughs> to make probably the first true bypass with LED indicator effects because I employed a telecommunications relay in my pedals to switch the audio. The audio was never switched with the foot switch in the second generation pedals. Really high efficiency and uh, with contacts that were really made for audio switching. They were made for like a million cycles or something, you know, because they, they put them in, uh, you know, huge telecommunications networks and stuff. So, but that was how I got around it. So I was able to use these, uh, you know, regular off-the-shelf uh, double pull, double throw switches uh, and have true bypass and an indicator light because I wasn't using the switch <laughs> to switch the audio. I was using a double pull relay. After uh, a while, I really got tired of the unreliability and the dodginess of these switches, and I really splurged and moved on up <laughs> to the cliff. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the switch that I started to have made. These are custom made from the factory. Uh, Taiwanese made, but very, very rugged, heavy duty. All steel parts, very heavy duty mechanism, um, audio grade contact material, hermetically sealed <laughs> with Gliptol 
so uh, moisture couldn't get in and uh, the contacts wouldn't tarnish all that stuff so yeah th these cliff switches the these I was paying probably like three times more for these switches than I was for these <laughs> but you get what you pay for so I moved up to the cliff and uh, I was using these uh, through the uh, aughts and such and then um, when I came back doing the pedals in 2016 I started using the now very commonly found triple pole double throw switch and yeah so uh, the evolution of the switches going from relay switching to purely mechanical it, it was uh, decades in the making but I'll tell you the uh, the, the signal relays they um, they got me through <laughs> allowed me to do something which uh, wasn't very easy to do for a long time well I hope you enjoyed this little one <laughs> thanks for watching thanks too to uh, all the patrons down there on the patreon making all these videos possible thank you thank you thank you everyone down there on patreon would not be able to do this without my patrons all right I'll be back here at the bench uh, doing something else real soon I'm Fran.